present Supreme Court are very interested in separation of powers, of course. Um, it's probably, although there's one Dr. Carlin paper that it hasn't come up on, separation of powers is probably, in all honesty, um, the most likely question to come up in the exam. It's your banker. And you could get two questions in it. There was one old Law Society paper where there are three and a half to four questions on it. I mean, it's a very important topic. Breaking the issues down, there seems to be seven or eight issues you need to be aware of. And we need to kind of look at them, and they're covered in the chapters in, in separation of powers. And I propose to go through them again, because they are very important. There are a bunch of issues to deal with the judicial function. Uh, first things first, um, there's only a separation of powers issue at all if the body is exercising a judicial function. So the first thing you have to deal with is, well, what is a judicial function? Question one of October 2006, I didn't write this. The courts have shown no consistency in adopting any particular approach to interpreting the Constitution, and this gives rise to suspicion that individual judges are willing to rely on any interpretive approach that will offer useful support for a conclusion which they've already reached. That, that's a very general question. And a, a useful approach to that is to say, sometimes they pick historicism, sometimes they don't. They did pick historicism in McGee. They didn't pick historicism in Senate. Sometimes they use the literal approach, sometimes they use the broad approach. They did use the literal approach in Shea, but they didn't use the literal approach in Murray v. Ireland, where Costello declined to construe the family clause um, um, in that fashion, in a literal way. The broad approach, looking at the purposes and objectives of the document, particularly its purpose as a human rights charter. Then there's the historical approach, and I've written an article on that, published now in the November Bar Review, um, and also published in the Independent Law Review on the historical approach to constitutional interpretation. And um, it's an important topic. Should we, last night I was giving a paper, um, or responding to an auditor's paper in the Honourable Society of the King's Inns with two High Court judges and the Chief Justice on the panel beside me. It was quite an intimidating experience, to put it mildly. But um, some discussion during that panel and afterwards about whether we should use the Constitution in terms of whether we should employ the historical approach to look back at the intent of people in 1937, or whether, alternatively, we should construe the Constitution as a living instrument, which is what I argue in my piece. It's become quite topical. Um, it is the sort of issue that could present itself in the examination.